What happened? What caused this? What do we do now? Ah, oh, this is gonna be crazy cool! Roblox, as we knew it, is gone. The events, games, the aesthetic of yesteryear have been replaced by... <laughs> fucking Baby Gru. Right. What do we do now? No, in all seriousness though, like, Roblox has seen unprecedented changes since its release in 2006. As I mentioned earlier, events, games, and chiefly the aesthetic have all been lost to time. I'm not going to join the iRobot level of clone videos on if old Roblox is really better, because rather I really want to dive in depth into the actual objective reasons as to why Roblox has gotten boring over the past few years, really over this past decade. Focusing on company maturity, corporatism, and the like will give us a broader scope into why this phenomenon is occurring. Now, of course I'm going to be biased, but like I said earlier, I don't want to join the other horde of iRobot level clone videos on why Roblox sucks now, so I'll make sure to keep any subjective commentary to a minimum. And instead of focusing on the big picture right now, I want to kind of get into a more limited frame of mind. And to do this, I really want to take a look at the games page itself and the actual development culture on Roblox. Let's talk business. In order for your game to be successful, people have to want to play it, right? Would you ever even consider developing on a game engine that gave you little chance for success? Well, I and many others ignored that and decided to waste time making cool shit anyways. Speaking of which, try out my game. As Roblox has aged, its game market has gradually matured, and that keyword being matured, to prioritize larger and larger games over smaller independent ones. This is the natural course of any company like Roblox, mind you, as teams of developers often make more stable and profitable games than independent creators. This leads me to my first point, the stagnation of the games page. There are two sides to this, one that can be objectively explained why the games page itself has become this way, and one that subjectively explains why people feel this way, and why people feel the games page has gradually become more boring over time. But I'm just going to focus on the first half of this video. Starting off with the thing that actually gets people to make games, an incentive. This can be an intrinsic one that I and many others possess to a degree, where sometimes we make games just because we feel like it. For others though, <coughs> it is extrinsic, which is fine, and it mostly falls under financial motivation. Either way, a platform that gives neither an intrinsic nor extrinsic motivation to create games is a dead platform, plain and simple. A great example of how Roblox has entirely lost most of its incentives to develop can be shown through an antithetical example, Retro Studio. For those who don't know, Retro Studio is an actual Roblox game that emulates older versions of Roblox, spanning from about 2006 to 2015. The main point of it is actually to build and script your own games that emulate those from that time period. And you can see one of those in the background. Looking at the front page of games in Retro Studio, well, we see small, basic minigames that have the personal touch of an individual creator. Looking at this image here, and ignoring the copies of actual Roblox games, we don't talk about those, we see new games that will probably not be there in a couple weeks. The Teamwork Obby, Downhill Smash, The Floor is Lava, Party.exe, these are all games that likely didn't even exist last year. The objective reasons I was referring to earlier come down to this. People like new things. They don't even have to be unique, they just have to be something that looks new. This was not a problem on old Roblox, regardless of whether or not the game was made by an 11 year old smashing their keyboard until they accidentally spawned a building in, or a high quality shooter game, there was always an intense variety on the games page. This, by no means, means that Roblox back in the day was some magical experience every day and that each new dawn brought about a bountiful harvest of fun high quality games. Rather, it boils down to the principle of discoverability, which actually leads me into that very thing. 
Discoverability in this case relates to the ability for developers to get their games noticed and for the players themselves to actually find those games. Roblox's current games page is fundamentally a broken system and it has remained largely the same since about 2015. The only major change in this case being the moving of the popular category further down the page, maybe like a year or two ago. And even before then it was largely similar. Back in the day, it was a lot more feasible for the games page to operate this way though, as the differences in player numbers between a successful game and an unsuccessful game were less, meaning the average user saw more diversity on the games page on a regular basis. The games page, as it stands today though, literally only shows games that have been popular on the platform for basically half a decade at this point. Rarely is there a wildcard that pops up, but often this wildcard isn't even an original idea. Oftentimes it is just the same game from the same niche genre that only specific demographics want to play. Don't get me wrong, I've mostly outgrown Roblox as a platform discoverability wise. I only play the games I like and rarely do I experiment as much as I did when I was younger. But it is undoubtedly true that there are hundreds of games I used to play back in 2013 that nowadays wouldn't even scratch the surface of the front page. Essentially, the games page is fundamentally broken. It needs a rework to encourage young budding developers to put e-blood, sweat, and tears into making a fun game. Maybe make certain categories stand out so players don't see a bunch of square icons and rows, or use site-specific player data to suggest them new games that actually match what they play, or find a way to create a community-driven developer showcase program. Even without this though, there are ways that could alleviate this problem, a better connected community being one of them. This, unfortunately, is a hard thing to do when 50% of your demographic is under the age of 12, but Roblox's community, when it was smaller, seemed to collaborate and work together much better than they do today. This is just a natural progression of any platform, as I've mentioned before, though. Unfortunately, as both Roblox and YouTube grew over time, this connection waned, with the arguably positive removal of the forms in 2017, but with Roblox promising, yet not providing, a new alternative. Roblox as a whole just feels... cold. I am? Not dying per se, but just kind of distant. Now though, let's zoom back out to the big picture and really understand why Roblox has fundamentally changed and become fundamentally more boring since it released. And most importantly, I want to focus on corporatism and company maturity for this, and I'll explain more what that means in the next part. Roblox is a corporation, eh, not doing so great right now. But it is a company nonetheless. It has deadlines, profit margins, investors, etc. Without satisfying all of these requirements, your business fails. And, of course, they take a much higher precedent over everything else at Roblox. So, it makes sense that the company itself is oriented from a very personal and in-touch company to one that is more distant, as well as becoming much more disaffected too. What does that big boy word mean, you ask? Essentially, in this case, they become uncaring and distant enough to not only fall under ignorance, but to actively make decisions that harm their own company without them even realizing. When your entire corporation becomes so distant and disaffected that your own users can do things better than you can, it's a bad sign. This leads to those people leaving and creating things that are infinitely better. Roblox is too recent of a company, in terms of being public and a big player in the tech scene, to be immune to internal and external pressure from their own fan base. All it takes is for a developer to be fed up with Roblox's disaffected attitude towards themselves for them to leave and create a platform that is far more friendly to new developers and potentially to directly compete with Roblox. Surprisingly, something they've actually really never had before. Take a look at Motorola in the 1970s, a huge multinational telecom and computer company that, within a few short years, alienated their best and brightest engineers only to get beat by them when they released their groundbreaking microprocessors. And there's actually a great video by the low spec gamer on that, I'll link it in the description. The same might happen to Roblox here too. Obviously not the exact same thing, but you know what I mean by that. This sort of distant reality leads me to my next point. Corporatism. I still remember when the classic random new TV show from Disney leads to three sponsored games that had shitty thrown together events for their already bad games was considered too corporate back in the day. And honestly, they weren't wrong. But obviously we're seeing a trend in an even worse direction now. I will admit though, I actually kind of like the new event structure. Lots of well-built places, less bugs, kinda, and a generally decent experience. But the level and frequency of which Roblox has attracted new companies to sponsor games has greatly increased. This obviously is a result of the company itself gaining a larger player base and being way more attractive for investors and other companies alike. Don't get me wrong, I don't blame Roblox at all for this simple cause and effect scenario. However, 
It is an objective truth as to why Roblox feels more boring now. There is so little personal touch from the admins that it feels like a town square over a local bar. Sure, the town square has lots of people in it and it can still be a lot of fun, but at a local bar, you know everyone, the owner knows your name and what you like, and it feels like a community. Key word, community. People, of course, still call Roblox a community in the sense of the word, but it is hardly such a thing now in the connotative sense. As any consumer-dominated company is ran, as they get bigger, the individual matters less, and the big money makers matter more. I don't hold this against them, either, but it is clear that Roblox has matured to the point that they no longer hold any regard for the community as an entity itself. Hence why, nowadays, even comparing them to the mid-2010s, they basically just pay lip service to the average player. This also explains my final point, their poor moderation. Now, Roblox moderation has been god-awful ever since it was released. It makes sense, and I understand it. I'll never forget being 9 years old and seeing games like AWESOME HOUSE WITH NAKED PEOPLE pop up on the front page and see like 300 people playing it until it was deleted a couple hours later. Yes, hours. I was so young then, I had very little clue as to what was even happening in those games when I first played one. But, Roblox moderation back then actually seemed to be holding on decently well compared to today. The filter works pretty well and wasn't too restrictive, for 13+, plus, obviously, and most of the rule-breaking stuff wasn't too extreme. It was a sweet spot in between having enough mods to cover the platform and legitimately just less players to actually police for bad behavior. Nowadays, things couldn't be more different. Roblox, like YouTube did in the past, has begun employing the help of machine learning and robot moderators to dish out bans for minor infractions. And, rather than make these actually being good, you're hard pressed to find someone actually agreeing with their own ban reason when the robot dishes out these punishments. Of course, though, I can't really blame them for this either. People are people, and moderation is an incredibly challenging task. But it's almost more about how Roblox never proactively tries to deal with moderation issues and rather waits until the media lights a fire beneath their asses before they actually get on something. If you want to win a cat and mouse game, you should probably kill a mouse before it even enters the house. This is no different for Roblox, and yet they refuse to change the way they deal with new emerging threats until they get drilled by the media. This is not a way to run a platform as large as Roblox. They seem to run it moderation-wise as they would have like 10 years ago, when this simply doesn't work. So, naturally, this comes with a loaded question. What does this mean for the future of Roblox? Where will this take Roblox in the next 10 years? Well, I'm gonna leave that to another video for time, but if you do want to see this video, comment down below and let me know, because I actually want to make sure I'm gonna put a lot of time and effort into researching the potential future of Roblox if people really want to see it. But other than that, thank you guys for watching this video, and I'm gonna be gone for about two weeks after the release of this, so if you're wondering where I am, that's all I'll be. I might be able to get something out there, but I doubt it. So I'll see you then, and thank you for watching.